I really thought it was an individual retirement account. Today we're going to talk about IRAs. They are individual retirement arrangements. Essentially it's a retirement account so that just means that you put money in, it's invested in some way, mutual fund stocks, commodities perhaps. It grows over time so that you can take it out of retirement or potentially before. And what do you know, there are many different individual retirement arrangements out there. So let's start with the basic one, excuse me, traditional. And this account is what's known as tax deferred. So you are deferring your tax on that account until you retire. But if for some reason you already have a tax deferred plan, perhaps with your employer, or if you're married, your spouse has one, those deductions may be smaller than what you're expecting. And I will let you talk to your tax professional because I am not one. And if you're over 50, you can make catch up contributions to this plan up to $7,000. The great thing about these traditional IRAs is that there are no income limits. So you can be making whatever amount of money and you'll still be able to contribute to this account. However, when you do you reach a certain age you will be required to make minimum distributions so you can't really leave it there for as long as you live you have to take money out and because it's tax deferred when you take it out you will be taxed on it now you may be in a lower tax bracket than you were when you first put the money in but all of the earnings that you have on that money from when you first put it into that account and invested it will also be taxed. If you try to withdraw the earnings though, and you don't meet the qualified exceptions like buying your first house, you'll probably be assigned a tax penalty of 10% for taking that out, especially if you are less than 59 and a half years old. So that's something to think about. Is that my dog? Hi, Percy. Okay, Percy has decided to join us today. And essentially you contribute your earned money towards your traditional IRA, but you can also have your employer do that automatically um, this is called a payroll deduction IRA. The only downside of that is that the employer won't get a business deduction on that. Um, you can take loans out. I know that it's very common, but you can't do that with the payroll deduction IRA. Moving on to Roth IRA. The good thing about this is that your contributions grow and earn money tax free. That is just your money. Yes, it's going to be your money too. There are no required minimum distributions on this account, so you can just leave that money in there for as long as you want it to be there. One of the downsides to the Roth IRA though is that there are income limits. So if you are making above a certain amount of money as a single or married filer, you either will only be able to contribute a reduced amount or you just won't be able to contribute at all because you're making so much money and that's a good thing, that's a good problem to have. With the Roth IRA, you can also withdraw your contributions at any time. However, like the traditional, you can't withdraw your earnings or else you'll incur a 10% tax on that and you don't wanna do that unless it's a qualified expense like buying a home. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, can I have both of these accounts? Yes. Can I max both of these accounts out? No, you can only contribute up to the $6,000, you know, depending on your income. But the issue is that that contribution limit applies across all of your IRA accounts. So spend your $6,000 contribution limit wisely. Generally, people advocate for the traditional IRA if you think that you'll be in a lower tax bracket at retirement. I personally really like the idea of tax-free growth, but your situation may not be that clear cut. Which brings me to the simple IRA. It stands for Savings Incentive Match Plan for Employees. It's an employer plan for small businesses, specifically ones that have less than 100 employees. They can either offer a 3% matching contribution to their employees, or they can choose to do a 2% non-elective contribution, essentially meaning that their employees don't have to contribute anything at all for them to still get a 2% contribution into their IRA. These contributions go into a traditional traditional IRA, not a Roth IRA, so keep that in mind. The really cool thing about this IRA compared to the other ones is that there's a $14,000 contribution limit, and that's pretty high compared to the $6,000 limit of the other IRAs. And if you're over 50 years old, you can make catch-up contributions up to $17,000. This account also stipulates that employees are always 100% vested in the money in those accounts. Otherwise, your company kind of owns part of your balance so it's a really good thing that you would be 100 percent vested in that account next up is the self-directed ira you can invest in things other than what you would find in your traditional or your roth because those typically involve buying or trading mutual funds stocks 
bonds, ETFs. With self-directed IRAs, you can invest in things like precious metals, commodities, real estate, limited partnerships. However, for these accounts, you need a qualified IRA custodian to open one. But just like the traditional in Roth, you can only contribute up to $6,000 across all your IRA accounts. So it's not like you can have a Roth self-directed IRA and then just a regular Roth IRA and max them both out to have $12,000 in assets. No, unfortunately, you can't do that. They all have to total $6,000. The main issue with this account is that there can be a lot of risk associated with it. Like there are some prohibited transactions depending on what you're buying. Some of these custodian accounts don't necessarily check the quality of these investments or whatever, whatever the things are that you're buying. So be aware of that. Be aware of any fees that can be associated with this account. But um, it seems like a great option. Just definitely do your research on what this is and what kinds of things you're planning to buy before you actually do anything. Next up is the SEP IRA. So this stands for Simplified Employee Pension Plan. This kind of IRA works for any business, whether you're self-employed or not. You can be a large business, a small business. There are no startup or operating costs, much like the simple IRA. However, the main difference is that only the employer contributes the money. So the employee doesn't do this. The employer kind of takes it out of the paycheck and then contributes it to the account. Despite this, the employee is still always 100% vested in this account. And the biggest thing about this account is that you can contribute up to 25% of your employee's compensation. And my favorite part, the contribution limits. The limit is 25% of an employee's compensation. You know, if someone's making $100,000, you can contribute $25,000, which is more than is allowed for like 401ks. There is another limit though, which is 61,000 for 2022. So it'll be the lesser of the two, either 25% of your compensation or the 61,000. The only drawback is that SEP IRAs are traditional, which, you know, not my favorite, but either way, the employees can decide which investments they want to make. So there's still a lot of flexibility with this account, despite it being a traditional IRA. And oh, okay, I think this is my favorite part about it. You can still contribute to a traditional or Roth IRA, like the very typical ones, while having a SEP IRA. So. For example, if you are a small business owner, you are self-employed, you can contribute up to 25% of that compensation towards your SEP IRA while contributing to your Roth or traditional IRA separately. And so you have your $6,000 contribution limit on one side and your 25% or $61,000 contribution limit on the other side if you're making that much money. So definitely keep that in mind. I am so happy that I learned about this account because I had heard of it, but I didn't really know what it entailed and I thought maybe it would conflict with the traditional and Roth, but they don't. The main stipulation though is that your business does in fact make money. So let me know in the comments below what accounts you're planning to open, what accounts you have. Personally, I'm definitely planning to open up a Roth IRA after I'm debt free so that I can max it out and then we'll see.